Then Brahmaru Daya Adika Bayemo Jantija Suraya Tejo Varim Rida Jita Vinima Joja Tratrisagum Rusya Namna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyang Param Di Mahi O my Lord Sri Krishna Son of Vasudeva O all providing for Snod of God, I offer my respect for the best of the Son to you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because He is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because He is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. <coughs> He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause. It is, it is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart the of The original Brahma. living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him. I therefore meditate upon him. Lord Sri Krishna, Lord who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representations. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravocha. Dharma Projita Kaitravocha. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Munam. Shivadam Tapu Trayon Munam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimba Parer Ishwaraha. Kimba Parer Ishwaraha. Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Te Tra. Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Te Tra. Krite Bihi Susus Abhistakshanat. Krite Bihi Susus Abhistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are material motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold mystery. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahoraska bhuvi bhavakaha. Muhur ahoraska bhuvi O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. 
Therefore, this food has become even more tasteful. Even though it's, it's, uh, even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Vidyantak Stohi Abhadrani. Vidyantak Stohi Abhadrani. Vidu Noti Srihit Satam. Vidu Noti Srihit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is it self righteous activity? It is self righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preesu bhadreesu. Nasta preesu bhadreesu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the transcendental service of the Lord, in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamalo badayas chaye. Kamalo badayas chaye. Chete itar anavidam. Chete itar anavidam. Stitvam sattve prasidati. Stitvam sattve prasidati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. And this material last and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manasu. Evam prasanna manasu. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangha shijayate. When these impurities are wiped away, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hirdaya grantis. Vidyate hirdaya grantis. Siddhyante sarvasam saya. Siddhyante sarvasam saya. Siddhyante jasya karmani. Siddhyante sarvasam karmani. Justa evatmani shwari. Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the heart, not a material affection. Thus, the Bhakti Yoga serves the heart, not a material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagram. Understanding of the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Understanding of supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, chapter 18, verse number 21. Atapiyat pada nakavashtristam Atapiyat pada nakavashtam Jagat virikopahitar an namaba jagat virincha palarta prani se sam punat yat an yatamo mukunda se sam punat yat tatamo mukunda ko nam loke bhagavat padarta ko nam loke bhagavat padarta Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Who can be worthy of the name of the Supreme Lord but the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna? Brahmaji collected the water emanating from the nails of his lotus feet in order to award it to Lord Shiva as a worshipful welcome. This very water, the Ganges, is purifying the whole universe, including Lord Shiva. Mm. 
purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The conception of many gods in the Vedic literatures by the ignorant is completely wrong. The Lord is one without a second, but he expands himself in many ways, and this is confirmed in the Vedas. Such expansions of the Lord are limitless, but some of them are the living entities. The living entities are not as powerful as the Lord's plenary expansions, and therefore there are two different types of expansions. Lord Brahma is generally one of the living entities, and Lord Shiva is the via medium between the Lord and the living entities. In other words, even demigods like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, who are the chief amongst all demigods, are never equal or greater than Lord Vishnu the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, and all powerful demigods like Brahma and Shiva are engaged in the worship of Vishnu or Lord Krishna. Therefore, who can be more powerful than Mukunda, Lord Krishna, to be, factual, to be factually called the Supreme Personality of Godhead? The goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, Lord Brahma, and Lord Shiva are not independently powerful. They are powerful as expansions of the Supreme Lord, and all of them are engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, and so also are the living entities. There are four sects of worshipful devotees of the Lord, and the chief amongst them are the Brahma Sampradaya, Rudra Sampradaya, Sri Sampradaya, descending directly from Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, respectfully. Besides the above mentioned three sampradayas, there is the Kumara sampradaya descending from Sanat Kumara. All of the four original sampradayas are still scrupulously engaged in the transcendental service of the Lord up to date, and they all declare that Lord Krishna, Mukunda, is the supreme personality of Godhead, and no other personality is equal to him or greater than him. Srila Prabhupada Ki <clears throat> So the, the quest for knowledge, which goes parallel with chanting Hare Krishna, is necessary for one to understand correctly the hierarchy of the material and spiritual world. Without understanding correctly the hierarchy, uh, the origin of everything, the different levels of uh, empowerment of individuals, uh, one remains in ignorance. And therefore, their attempt to go back to Godhead will be stymied, will be obstructed by that ignorance. <clears throat> Therefore, in many different places, Prabhupada is explaining what this hierarchy is. And in many places, Krishna himself explains it. And it's repeated over and over again, so we try, so we don't make any mistakes about <laughs> understanding it. So, uh, the problem is that there's so much misinformation that people get uh, confused and misdirected in this life. Just like it says, Tamais tais tai hitigyana papadyante niya devata tam tam niyamam astaya pakritya niyataksvaya, which says, those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires surrender unto demigods and follow the particular rules and regulations of worship according to their own natures. So, that means for those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires. What does that mean exactly? Well, Prabhupada explains this. He says, persons who are thus constantly tormented by unlimited desires suffer much distress, which spoils their intelligence. That is why Krishna calls them krita men with lost intelligence. They become polytheists, that means worshiping many gods, and hasten to worship various 
demigods. Polytheists cannot comprehend that Krishna Bhakti Kaila Sarva Karma Krita Hai. By worshiping Lord Krishna, one automatically takes care of all other subsidiary duties. Polytheists, polytheists, polytheists think that demigods like the sun god are equal to the supreme Lord Krishna. Such men of distorted intelligence can never take shelter of Lord Krishna's lotus feet. On the other hand, lofty-minded persons with incisive intelligence are convinced that Lord Krishna is the supreme being. If somehow they harbor some material desires, they immediately approach Lord Krishna and pray to him. Okay, so this is a very important explanation because uh, we can understand why so many people worship the demigods in India. It's because they have, they're overwhelmed with material desires. Oftentimes, uh, people who very seldom come to the temple, maybe they come once a year or twice a year, maybe once in every two years or three years or five years, but when there's some tragedy in the fun family, they come. Like I remember some years ago, this family came who hardly ever came. I knew them because I, I did one uh, program in their ha house once, and then uh, I didn't see them for a long time, and then they came. And the father and the mother were crying, and they brought one of their sons, they had, I think, three sons, and, they, and his wife, and they said, you know, please, please do something, he has cancer. <laughs> well, I said, I, I'm not, uh, I don't know what you mean, do something, what, what do you mean? I said, well, do some puja, your puja can heal him. I said, well, I can't guarantee that, but we'll do it anyway, if you want. So I had them chant Hare Krishna, and uh, we said some mantras, gave him some tulsi leaf, and some Ganges water, and uh, asked him to repeat the mantra, and, and so forth. So um, those are uh, what you would call material desires. Uh, actually, you don't have to pray to Krishna for anything material. He just prayed by chanting Hare Krishna and hear about the glories of the Lord and repeat them and, and offer choice prayers to the Lord from the scriptures, just like prayers of Prahlad Maharaj, the Brahma Samhita, prayers of Brahma, prayers of uh, uh, Lord Shiva, glorifying the Lord and so forth. There's so many prayers in the in the Srimad Bhagavatam glorifying the Lord and in Bhagavad Gita also. Lord the Lord is present in the heart as Paramatma. See so you don't have to, you know, remind him what's going wrong or remind him of what you would like to have. You just you just concentrate on glorifying the Lord. But people come with these material desires and they blurt them out and they want some uh results. So that's why they usually go to the demigods. And what happens when a person is uh, hita jnana, one who's lost their, their intelligence because of unlimited desires? When you have unlimited desires, you suffer much distress trying to figure out how to get them and trying different strategies to satisfy those desires. So that's when you lose your intelligence. And therefore, it says here, they become polytheists and hasten to worship various demigods. Polytheists, or people who worship many gods, cannot comprehend that Krishna Bhakti Kaila Sarva Karma Krita Hai. By worshiping Lord Krishna, one automatically takes care of all other subsidiary duties. Now, this is an important point that requires uh, some discussion, and Prabhupada discusses this at length. And uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, 41st verse, Prabhupada quotes the 
a verse, uh, first canto, fifth chapter, seventeenth verse. Tyak fuswa dharman charanam buja harir bhajan apakvo tapatet tato yadi yatra kwa bhadram abud amusya kim kovarta abdo bhajatam swadharma taha. If someone gives up his occupational duties and works in Krishna consciousness and then falls down on account of not completing his work, what loss is there on his part? And what can one gain if one performs his material activities perfectly? Or, as the Christians say, what profiteth a man if he gain the whole world yet suffers the loss of his eternal soul. And then Prabhupada writes, material activities and their results end with the body, but work in Krishna consciousness carries a person again to Krishna consciousness, even after the loss of the present body. At least, one is sure to have a chance in the next life of being born again in a human, as a human being, either in the family of a great cultured Brahmana or in a rich aristocratic family that will give one a further chance for elevation. That is the unique quality of work done in Krishna consciousness. In other words, basically what he's saying is you can never be a loser in Krishna consciousness. You can only be a winner because the result of engaging in devotional service is at least, even if you don't finish it, you come back to Krishna consciousness again in the next life. And we see this. Like, for example, our uh, Gopal Krishna Prabhu, who is only, how old is he? Three? Four. Four. But yet, he chants Hare Krishna, he worships his little deity of Gopal Krishna, right? Yadu Gopal. And, and, and he... Uh, likes to do service, he likes the cows, he likes to serve the cows, he comes to the temple regularly. He knows how to chant many uh, Bhagavad Gita slokas. So you see, he was definitely a devotee in his past life. That's why he took birth in a family of devotees. And right, right from the beginning of his life, he was introduced again to Krishna consciousness. And this is explained in Bhagavad Gita, 6th chapter, 40th and 41st verse, where it says, uh, Shri Bhagavan Uvacha, Partanai Veyanam Utra, Vinasas Tashavidyate, Nahikalyana Kritkasya, Durgatim Tatagatshati. So, Lord Krishna says, The Supreme Personality of God had said, O son of Prita, Arjuna, a transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities does not meet with destruction either in this world or in the, ne or in the spiritual world. One who does good, my friend, is never overcome by evil. So in the purport, Prabhupada quotes the same verse, Tyakvasa Dharma, Charanam Bhujam Harir. If someone gives up all material prospects and takes complete shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there is no loss or degradation in any way. On the other hand, a non-devotee may fully engage in his occupational duties and yet not gain anything. For material prospects, there are many activities, both spiritual and customary. A transcendentalist is supposed to give up all material activities for the sake of spiritual advancement in life. Krishna consciousness. One may argue that by Krishna consciousness, one may attain the highest perfection if it is completed. But if one does not attain such a perfectional stage, then he loses both materially and spiritually. In other words, he's a two-time loser. He gave up sense gratification and he never finished the perfection of Krishna consciousness. It is enjoined in the scriptures that one has to suffer the reaction for not executing prescribed duties. Therefore, one who fails to dis discharge transcendental activities properly becomes subjected to these reactions. So in other words, because, well, they gave up sense gratification, joined Krishna consciousness, but in Krishna consciousness they were not able to finish it and go back to Godhead. And they might have made some mistakes, and now they have to suffer for those mistakes. 
However, the Bhagavatam assures the unsuccessful transcendentalist that there is no need, there is need be no worries, even though he may be subjected to the reaction for not perfectly executing prescribed duties, he is still not a loser because auspicious Krishna consciousness is never forgotten, meaning never forgotten by Krishna, and one so engaged will continue to be so even if he is low-born in the next life. On the other hand, one who simply follows strictly the prescribed duties need not necessarily attain auspicious results if he is lacking in Krishna consciousness. In other words, one is a perfect husband or a perfect wife, one uh, gets their kids educated, one has a nice house, nice car, one uh, has a nice uh, 401k, and one you know, comes to the temple every once in a while, gives some donations, and uh, but yet you know they also enjoy life and uh, and and the sense gratification and the mode of goodness. Actually, uh, <laughs> what what he's saying here is uh, that although they did their prescribed duties as a good family, uh, as a good husband or a good wife, and their kids are good. Uh, they need not, however, necessarily attain auspicious results if he or she is lacking in Krishna consciousness. So what does that mean, lacking in Krishna consciousness? That means that they really don't have love for Krishna, but they know that if they do certain things in Krishna consciousness, it'll be good for them, and uh, they will get good results uh, materially, and uh, they'll get some spiritual benefit also. But if they don't actually attain love for Krishna, then uh, more or less they have not been on a progressive path. They've been on a, on, a, on a good path, but it's not progressive spiritually because of their holding on to material pleasures. The purport may be understood as follows. Humanity may be divided into two sections, namely the regulated and the non-regulated. Those who are engaged simply in bestial sense gratifications without knowledge of their next life or spiritual salvation belong to the non-regulated section. And those who follow the principles of prescribed duties in the scriptures are classified amongst the regulated section. The non-regulated section, both civilized and uncivilized, educated and non-educated, strong and weak, are full of animal propensities. Their activities are never auspicious because while enjoying the animal propensities of eating, sleeping, defending, and mating, they perpetually remain in material existence, which is always miserable. In other words, if you do eating, sleeping, mating, and defending on a high level, or if you do eating, sleeping, mating, and defending on a low level, you're still a loser. <clears throat> Their activities are never auspicious because while enjoying the animal propensities of eating, sleeping, defending, and mating, they perpetually remain in material existence, which is always miserable. On the other hand, those who are regulated by scriptural injunctions and who thus rise gradually to Krishna consciousness certainly progress in life. So notice the word gradually. It's very important. It's not like uh, fast food or immediate results. The immediate result is one f feels relief from material suffering. One feels that they're fortunate to have come in contact with Krishna consciousness. One becomes happy and one realizes that uh, they are, uh, they've been blessed and one gives up any thoughts about liberation and one realizes that through devotional service, it's the only way by which one can attract Krishna. However, it's a slow process. It doesn't happen. One doesn't become a pure devotee overnight. But one engages in the activity of pure devotees, meaning devotional service, immediately by chanting Hare Krishna, etc. But to get rid of uh, material desires, can take a long time and, and because we have been addicted to material desires over 
8,400,000 species. So you're not going to be able to get rid of these type of gross or subtle material desires overnight. But they can be controlled and eventually you can eliminate them completely. So it says, Prabhupada says, uh, who thus rise gradually to Krishna consciousness, certainly progress in life. Those who are following the path of auspiciousness, meaning Krishna consciousness, can be divided uh, and being regulated, can be divided into three sections, namely, one, the followers of scriptural rules and regulations who are enjoying material prosperity. Number two, those who are trying to find ultimate liberation from material existence. So number one is like you would say the people who are, well, number one can be divided into two sections. I'm just going to say that. I'll, I'll come to that then first. And number three is those who are devotees in Krishna consciousness. Those who are following the rules and regulations of scripture for material happiness. Okay, that was number one, right? That's, that's the people who are regulated. May be further divided into two classes. Those who are fruit of workers and those who desire no fruit from sense gratification. So here, this is very important, uh, like say, explanation that Prabhupada is making. He's saying of those people who are regulated, the first class of those people who are regulated, or the first subclass, are those who are actually enjoying material prosperity. And in that group, you can s further subdivide them into two categories. Those who are karmakandis, who do follow regulated principles, but their goal is sense gratification. And secondly, those who are uh, blessed with material prosperity, but use everything in Krishna's service, such as kings like Prithu Maharaj, Dhruva Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj. They were all devotees, but they were extremely, extremely wealthy, but they only used their wealth in Krishna consciousness, and they remained regulated. Whereas some people follow the rules and regulations uh, but they're attached to the results and they're attached to the, sense, the higher level of sense gratification they're getting, like elevation of heavenly planets, association of uh, heavenly personalities, and so forth, long duration of life, very, very uh, high class sense gratification. So now he's going to say something about that first subtitle, the, sub, uh, the second sub category of people who are regulated. He says, he says, uh, those who are following the rules and regulations of the scriptures for material happiness may be further divided into two classes. Those who are fruit of workers and those who desire no fruit for sense gratification. Those who are after fruit of results for sense gratification may be elevated to a higher standard of life, even to the higher planets. But still, because they are not free from material existence, they are not following the truly auspicious path. In other words, they're still subject to karma. And what happens to them, that's explained later on in the ninth chapter, uh, where Krishna explains what happens to these people who are, are, have been regulated, who are seem to be on the, on the progressive path, but they're still attached to material sense gratification. So it says, Tetam bhukva swargalokam vishalam shine punye martyalokam vishanti. It says, when they have thus enjoyed vast heavenly sense pleasure and the results of their pious activities are exhausted, they return to this mortal planet again. Thus, those who seek sense enjoyment by hearing by adhering, by following, the principles of the three Vedas achieve only repeated birth and death. So what Prabhupada is saying here is that such people are not really on the truly auspicious path. The only auspicious activities are those which lead one to liberation. Any activity which is not aimed at ultimate self-realization or liberation from material bodily concept of life 
is not at all auspicious. Activity in Krishna consciousness is the only auspicious activity and anyone who voluntarily accepts all bodily discomforts, discomforts for the sake of making progress on the path of Krishna consciousness can be called a perfect transcendentalist under severe austerity. And because of the Eightfold Yoga system is directed toward the ultimate realization of Krishna consciousness, such practice is also auspicious, and no one who is trying his best in this matter need fear degradation. So this is a, a longer discussion, but very important point that's being made here by Prabhupada. And then in the next verse, 641, Prabhupada says, the unsuccessful yogi, after many, many years of enjoyment, on the planets of the pious living entities, is born into a family of righteous people or into a family of rich aristocracy. And Prabhupada writes, the unsuccessful yogis are divided into two classes. One has fallen after very little progress and one has fallen after long practice of yoga. The yogi who falls after a short period of practice goes to the higher planets where pious living entities are allowed to enter after prolonged life there, one is sent back again to this planet to take birth in the family of a righteous Brahmana, Vaishnava, or of aristocratic merchants. The real purpose of yoga practice is to achieve the highest perfection of Krishna consciousness, as explained in the last verse of this chapter. But those who do not persevere to such an extent and who fail because of material allurement, allurements are allowed by the grace of the Lord to make full utilization of their material propensities. And after that, they are given opportunities to live prosperous lives in righteous aristoc or aristocratic families. Those who are born in such families may take, and notice the word may, may take advantage of the facilities and try to elevate themselves to full Krishna consciousness. However, the next verse 42 says, or if unsuccessful after long practice of yoga, he takes his birth in a family of transcendentalists who are surely great in wisdom. Certainly such a birth is rare in this world. So that's an example of Gopal Krishna Prabhu or other devotees, uh, other young children that have been born in devotee families. Uh, because they were yogis or devotees in previous life, but they practiced for a long time, and because of some latent material desires, they didn't achieve the perfection. They don't have to go to the pious, they don't have to go to the Deva Lokas and enjoy prolonged sense gratification and come back and be born in an aristocratic or uh, uh, families, uh, or Brahmana families. They take birth directly in a family of transcendentalists who, it says, are surely great in wisdom. Certainly such a birth is rare in this world. And then Prabhupada says, birth in a family of yogis or transcendentalists, those with great wisdom, is praised herein because the child born in such a family receives a spiritual impetus from the very beginning of his life. It is especially the case in the Acharya or Goswami families such families are very learned and devoted by tradition and training, and thus they become spiritual masters. In India, there are many such Acharya families, but they have now degenerated due to insufficient education and training. By the grace of the Lord, there are still families that foster transcendentalists generation after generation. It is certainly very fortunate to take birth in such families. Fortunately, both Ma, our spiritual master, Om Vishnu Pada, Shri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, and our humble self had the opportunity to take birth in such families by the grace of the Lord. And both of us were trained in the devotional service of the Lord from the very beginning of our lives. Later on, we met by the order of the transcendental system. So here Prabhupada explains how he and his guru, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, were both born in Acharya families. And their father and mother trained them right from the beginning of their life to be Krishna conscious. 
<coughs> and look at the result, um, what they achieved in spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. So this is, an ex this is a very interesting explanation. Uh, it takes time to digest all this information, but it's very important to have a good, clear understanding of Krishna consciousness. Now, there's a lot more to this because uh, in the... Uh, in the, uh, uh, the second chapter, Prabhupada often quotes a verse, Vivasat Mika Budhir Ekaha Kurunandana, Bahusaka Hinantas Chad, Budayo Vivasayanam. It's an extremely important verse, and it's connected to many other very important verses. But I'll stop right there today, and we'll continue this subject tomorrow. It's a big subject. There's a lot to digest, and it's the core of Krishna consciousness. It's the heart of Krishna consciousness. Are there any questions? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, just one clarification Maharaj, in this verse, the living entities are not as powerful as Lord's premillennial expansions and therefore there are two different types of expansions. Lord Brahma is generally one of the living entities. So, uh, so Lord Brahma is, uh, is a living entity but we are calling as expansion. He's a jiva, like you and me. Yeah. But we are calling as a uh, expansion of Krishna. We're all expansions of Krishna. You're expansion of Krishna. Yeah. So, so is Lord Brahma is a, like a special, like some extra uh, empowered? Lord Brahma is an example of what you can achieve. Up to seventy-eight percent of Krishna's opulences and and qualities. Okay. But he's on a higher level than us because he he's been progressive okay. in many lifetimes. Okay, but we can achieve that same position. Okay, thank you. So you just said like uh, Lord Brahma is progressive in some after many lifetimes, but Brahma is also the first living being. How do we understand? The Brahma is a titular position. You mm. have to look this word up, titular, T-I-T-U-L-A-R. It's just like President Trump is, has a tri titular position. He's the, I think, the 45th or 46th president of the United States. And now his, he has to leave the White House and the 47th president is going to enter called Joe, oh, 46th president is going to enter Mr. Joe Biden or Sleepy Joe. Okay, so it's a titular position, it's a title position. It can be held by many different people over time. You see, what, is that what that says, titular? Yeah, it's a holding or constituting a purely formal position or title without real authority, that's one, and denoting a person or a thing from whom or which the name of the artistic work. Or anyway, it's a title, title. Okay. right? So President of the United States is a title. Position of Brahma is a title. It's held by the most advanced person in the material world. It doesn't mean that they are absolute pure devotee. They're pure, but they still have a little bit of a desire to dominate. So therefore, they're given the position of Brahma. They can dominate. And if they follow properly, they go back to Godhead in that lifetime. And if they don't follow properly, then they go down. In fact, somewhere it says, I, I have to look this up, that when we fall down into the material world, we begin from the position of Brahma. But I'm not sure where that is. I, I, I remember reading it, but I don't remember where it is. So. Yeah, I, I, hear, I heard something similar, that we all started from Brahma, and then we, we may have come down. Well, anyone in the material world can go up or down, right? Or go back to Godhead. So if you become too... 
uh, let's say, overwhelmed with dominating, you go down. And if you understand that you're the eternal servant of the Lord, you go back to Godhead. Okay, so it's a, it's a tidal position. Yeah. Many people can hold that position. In fact, there's Brahma himself with four heads. He found out that there's millions and billions of other Brahmas in other universes. So it's a tidal, a titular position. Any other questions or comments? We'll continue this subject tomorrow. There's a lot more to be said. All glories to Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Haribo, Haribo.